Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to teach you how to do a very simple splash screen inside Godot. Uh, what you'll learn in this is how to set up something that will have an any key, uh, how to use the animation player and how to switch um, scenes as well and as well as signals. So there's quite a few little beginner things to learn inside this project. I'll get on with it as soon as we can. So in the end project we're going to have this. As you see, nice little animation and then it goes up to a mock screen. So this is just a picture of a tile screen but it's in a new scene um, and then if I play it again you can see I can go press spacebar and I can skip it, it could be any key, it doesn't matter but let's get into it so what you'll have, this will be on GitHub if you want to download it on there but I've just made like a little tile screen this is just a picture and this is just this is like the scene we're going to go to obviously if you, ha if you had a real game then you'd want to use buttons and so on so let's get into it. So I'm going to close this down. It's been saved in my scenes folder. And what we want you to do is start up a new scene, an O2D, and I'll call this uh, Splash Screen. Then I'm going to add in an animation player. Also, I'm going to go to my sprites and I'm going to get my um, my um, Steam Makes Games logo thing as made for this tutorial. I'm going to play around about it here. I'll go to Transforms. Yeah, that'll do. Also, actually, I'm going to go to my project, project settings. Um, I think it's window environment. I want to make this black. There we go. Ooh, make sure that's not pairing it. So now with the animation player, what I want to do is I want to make a new animation and call it um, do splash animation. What I'm going to do is not have this on. What I normally do is have on repeat, but I won't. This is going to be on auto load. So as soon as this scene loads, this animation will uh, play straight away. Now, what I want to do is make this uh, come down, like have a lot of bounce effect. Now I want it to fade out, and then once it's finished fading out, I want to go into the next scene. So to have that bounce effect, we're going to use something called a Bezier curve, and I'll show you what that is now. So if you go to your add track. You go to your Bezier curve at the bottom here, and then you make sure that you've got your image that you want to move. Double click it, and I'm going to move its position. And then what I'm going to do is at zero, in fact, let's make this a bit bigger. I'm going to make this say five seconds. In fact, let's make it four. And then I'm going to go right click the Y position, insert key, and then that's our starting position. Now what I can do is move to around about here, or how fast you want it really. I'm going to move him down, but let's keep that, so I'm going to say 250. Yeah, 250 is fine. And I'm going to put another one here. Now the whole point of the Bezier curve now is that you can click this thing here. I don't know what it's called, but then you can manipulate the points. So as you can see now it's really linear, so if I, if I play this animation, let's go right to the beginning. You see it just kind of like comes down really boringly. So what I want to do is move these um, anchor points. I don't know what the right name for them is. But if you move it up, you can see that it will follow this stretch. And that's, this is actually going down. I know it's, it's inversed on the Y coordinate system. So you can see it kind of has like a lot of a bounce. And what I want to do is maybe make it a little bit quicker. I'm going to speed that up really quick. And then I'm going to... Press, press play and see what this does. Yeah, it's got like a, that's more of a shudder than a bounce. But yeah, what you do is you just keep messing around with these anchor points until you find something that you like. So I'm going to do something like this. I won't stay too long in this part. Yeah, that'll do. So now you understand the busy curve, you could have. You could you could really make some really complicated movements like this, but we're not going to do that for this tutorial. So what I'm going to do now is press this escape to get out of the Bezier curve editor. I'm going to add in a new property track um, on that image again, and I'm, this is going to be on the modulate. So what the modulate does is it messes around the colour, but that includes the alpha channel, which makes it go invisible. So what we're going to do is, once it's finished doing this, like, settles down, we're going to insert a key, which is going to be just the default modulate, which is like white. Go to inspector, go down to your visibility, now move over to say 
get RC four seconds, and then we'll, we can do this. And as you can see, it fades. Oh no, it doesn't because I didn't set it. So then make sure that you set it. Insert the key, and then you can actually see it represents the fade out here. So there you go. So this is roughly what I want. I'd, obviously, I'd want to tweak it so it looks a little bit quicker. I would want that fade out to be a little quicker, but it doesn't matter. So now you might think, right, well, how are we going to tell when this animation ends so we can go to the other scene, uh, to the title scene? One way you could use the timer, but um, what would be better than using the timer in this instance would be actually use the signal. So what we're going to do is just save this scene. We'll save it as in our scenes folder as splash screen. And then what we want to do is we want to go to the animation player. We want to go to the nodes. Now we can actually use a signal called animation finish. Now the splash screen needs a script on there, so I'll add a script. I'm going to make sure it's in my script folder. And then splash screen script. Great. Go back. Now we can go to animation again, go to your animation finish, double click it, and then make sure that your splash screen is selected because that's got the uh, sprite, the script on. Connect. And as you can see here, so what I'm going to do is type uh, font go title screen. And this will be get tree change scene. And then I'll go title screen. Is that right? Save, so, yeah. And now I can make sure that go title screen is on. Save that. Now what I want to do is go up to here. Make sure this when I press play, it'll ask me that hey, what what scene are we loading first? I'll make sure it's the sprite uh, the splash screen. We open that plays, fades out, and then eventually it goes to the next scene. So now we need to have it so you'll notice if I press play, like, it's always good to skip these scenes. I hate having to watch animations. So to do that, we could go to the um, splash screen, go to your sprite, and then I'm just going to move the stuff that we don't need just for now. And I'm going to have something called Funk input and I'm going to say if event is input key, event key then we know that we're, we're saying hey is this event happening in, in the input is it an input key which is like a key press then we know that a key has been pressed normally you'd go if there's a key press and it's key enter or key escape but for this one I'm just going to let you say any key so we can just skip that and also go type the screen press play and then there you go so just to make sure there is any key I'll press F yeah so there you go that's a very simple splash screen using an animation player a signal and changing scenes so this is probably uh, quite a good tutorial if you're brand new to game development. Um, the next tutorial I'm going to actually show you how to do a title screen so it'll carry on from here and then we'll get rid of this, uh, this, this texture and we'll use buttons. So thanks for stopping by, take care, bye bye.